Hello everybody, welcome back. This is part 26. If you remember from the last lesson, what we did was we took that sprite sheet that we broke apart into 36 different pieces and then we animated it. So the whole purpose of last lesson was to get our guy running around like this. So right now, we've got it exactly how we want. The guy's moving around and he's animated at the speed that, that we like. If you want to change the speed, I'm going to show you how to do that again in just a moment. Uh, but the way we did this was using first the setup sprites, which is something we were familiar with already. Uh, but in the last lesson, what we did was we used this update player method to take the change in movement from one draw cycle to the next. And we then detect the direction that we're moving and we update the internal state of our, of our player character, meaning we're updating this X and Y variable up here with the change that's being sent in from the move method out here. So remember the move method, all it's doing is just detecting how much X and how much Y has changed since the last time the draw loop was called. And meaning it's really just gonna be one in any direction. That's the most it's gonna be able to move. It's gonna be able to move one up, one down, one left, one right. And then we call update player with that information and it then checks which direction you're going based on that x and y delta and then changes this current direction variable. Now the clever thing we did with the current direction variable was we used it here as the array row. So these numbers up here, the directions, also match the sprite sheet row in here. So remember the zero row is going up and the one row is going left and two down and three right. And, and it works out pretty well that way. It means this matches this and it, it works very well when we're doing this, uh, drawing this image here. Now there's a couple things in here I wanna describe in a bit more detail. And one of them here is this, this modulus operator. Now I haven't really talked about this yet uh, in, any, in any detail, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pop over to another program here and I'm gonna show you exactly what modulus is. So if you're familiar with modulus, just go ahead and skip over the next couple minutes. But for those of you who aren't, uh, let's, let's take a look. Okay, so modulus is, is a pretty simple concept to understand. It's really just the, the remainder to a division problem. So for example, if I make A 10 and B equal to 14, and C equal to three. Yeah, let me make this a little bit small. Let's make this four and three. Okay, now if I print this out, say I do A modulus B, what I'm saying here is 10 divided by four, and then it does that calculation essentially, and it gives you the remainder from that. And what that means is how many times can B go into four? Well, four, eight, and I can't put it another time. So what's left over? Well, eight and 10, 10 minus eight is two. So if I were to run this, we would get a two. Okay? So that's, that's all it really is. And if I put C in here, you're gonna see one pop up down here. Let me move this up just a little bit. Okay, you get a one, all right? Now, if you have two numbers that are that are divisible, for example, let's say I change this to two. Two can go into 10 evenly with no remainder. So if I said A modulus C, it would be zero because two, four, six, eight, 10, and there's no remainder. So that's all modulus is. You can just think of it as the division uh, or the, the remainder of a division problem. So why is it so useful? Well, in programming, it's actually used a lot of times. Things like when we want to detect is a number even or is a number odd? So actually I can detect very easily if a number is even or odd. So for example, I can just say, say I have a number 167 and I do modulus two. Now you can tell this is gonna give a remainder of one because it's not even. So anytime I, I take a modulus two, if I get a one, the number is odd. If I get a zero, the number is even. It's just that, it's just that simple. So 168 is gonna give me zero. So that's an even number, all right? So why am I using it here? Well, you have to remember the, the professor PNG is broken into four rows and each row has nine columns. And the first column is the character standing still. So those other eight columns 
eight columns here, uh, need to be need to be drawn in a row, and then I need to loop back around to the start. So what this is doing is it's saying take the current frame, and the current frame if it's whatever number it is, plus 0 0.5 divided by eight. Okay. Well, the current frame starts at what? Well, it starts at zero. So what's this answer actually going to end up being? Let's pop back over here and see. So if current frame is zero and I'm adding 0 0.5 to it, and then I take modulus two. So let me, let me make this a little bit more. There we go. Current frame, current frame is zero. And then I modulus eight. All right. So what's this going to print out if current, my current frame starts at zero? Well, let's do that. It's going to be 0.5 because a number that's smaller than the other number, is 0.5, can't divide into eight evenly at all, meaning eight, 0 0.5 doesn't divide by eight. So let's say current frame becomes five. Well, if current frame becomes five, it's now 5.5. It's just saying add those two numbers together. So it's almost like this modulus eight isn't really even here. It's not really doing anything. But the real magic happens when we get further up. So this is now 7.5, and now when I get to 8, what happens? Or let's see, sorry, 7.5. Well, 7.5 plus 0 0.5 is 8. Well, what's 8 mod 8? 8 mod 8 is 0. I need to turn this to a floating point here, sorry. It is 0. Okay, so that's, that's it. If I then go over this, so I say I did 18. Well, I'm back at 2.5. So really all this is doing is it's saying you can never go over the number eight. You're always gonna be between zero and eight, okay, including eight. And how that helps us is up here, we take the current frame, which is zero to eight, and we add one to it. That means the lowest number we will have is one, and the highest number we'll have is nine, which corresponds to the, the first frame of our animation in the last frame of our animation. And then whenever current frame gets added on above eight, it then gets reset back down to being zero. Okay, so it's helping us loop through. So I recommend just go play with modulus, go play with it a bunch. I, I put a link in uh, lesson 25 to kind of help you with modulus. So if you want to take a look at that and, and, and just go, just learn a little bit about it. It's very, very, very helpful, very, very helpful operator. All right, but now let's get on to combining this code with our main program. To do that, we gotta fix one problem. And the, the problem is that right now, our character, when they're running around, is able to go off the screen like this. So we wanna fix that. Uh, to fix that, we're just gonna add a, a new method, and this method is gonna be called isPlayerOffScreen. Okay. And this method is just gonna check our X and our Y value here in order to detect if the player is off the screen or not. Okay, and I'm just gonna put int X and int Y. And it's a pretty simple method. It's just if X is less than zero, okay, or X is greater than width minus 30, Okay, or y is less than zero, or y is greater than, let's see, height minus 56, then I'm gonna return true, otherwise I return false. All right, so what did I do here? Well, remember the this character here, we're detecting everything from the top left corner of the little box that surrounds him. So if I turn this back on, you can see that here, turning this, this guy back on. You'll be able to see this top, this corner of this box right here. So let me move that over. So this right here, and the character here is 30 pixels wide and 56 pixels high. So that's why I have width minus 30. So when the character runs over to this side, I'm detecting from the top left corner, so I want to stop 30 when this is 30 pixels is touching here. So when it's width minus 30, and height, I want to stop the height when it is 
y, which is also measured from the top left corner, minus 56. Okay, so how do I use it up here? Well, it's pretty simple. I just say if is player off screen x, y, okay. then I'm going to move the player back to where he originally was. So right now I've, I've added something onto the player, but if the player is off the screen, I'm going to say, no, you can't go there, so back it up, whatever your movement was. And it's about as simple as that. Let's see. Is it, oh. See, is player off. Oh, okay. Let's change this to, this to a floating point. Sorry, that's my mistake. Uh, so if I'm running over here, Now the player gets stuck at there, stuck at the wall. He's still animate, so he's pretend like he's running into the wall. And the same thing happens up here. So right now the player will respond to all of the sides. Okay. So there's really not much too much more to do inside this code. What we've got to do now is we're gonna to have to take all of this here and we're gonna to have to update it into our original program. So let's go back to our original program, which we haven't seen in a long time. So just to refresh your memory, it looks like this. Oops, we got these ants running around everywhere. And we want to take our guy and put him in here. So to do that, we're going to create a new tab. I'm going to call this player because that's the name of the class we made. I'm going to come back over here, control A, and I'm going to copy everything inside of here. So now the player is all inside and that's really about it. Uh, what well, we got to come out here, and we're going to have to update a little bit of information in our move method, uh, because this move method is the one we want. We want this guy here. So I'm going to take that, and I'm going to come back over here, and I'm just going to copy that in. So all I'm doing, I'm just cutting and pasting, cutting and pasting. And I'm going to have to create a player character. So I'll also come back over here. And notice how I've created the player character like this. So I create the player character. Now let's create it. Yeah, that's fine right up there. And we're going to create player, player here. And the only thing I have left to do is player.drawPlayer. And at this point, Everything has been changed, and it should go ahead and draw the player exactly how I want. Now I've got, let's see, player, update player. I do need to update my player as well. I've got that done right here. I've got my draw player right here, and should go ahead and run it. Oh, I do need to make sure that the image is in the folder. Let me uh, take this guy off. I didn't think I put the, I didn't think, I put the Professor Green image in there, but I know I put the Professor image in. There we go. All right, so there's our guy, and the guy is in here now. So running around, no interaction yet with the ants. Notice that the ants are going to be drawn on top of him. Uh, we might fix that in the next lesson, but for right now, we've got our guy running around, and no real problems. So. If you have any questions about this, please leave them on YouTube or you can go ahead and uh, put them on my website. Uh, any comments, anything like that are accepted as well. Uh, constructive criticism is always welcome. All right, everybody, I will see you in next lesson when we'll get started with the man interacting with the ants and should be should be a lot of fun. So I hope to see you there.